Today on this show, we happen to be talking to a friend of mine that I've known for many years. In fact, we went to school together, and he became a somebody. We're very proud of him. We're talking to the Honorable Governor of the State of New Mexico, Mr. Jerry Apodaca. Jerry, oh, excuse me, Governor, nice to have you on the show. Thank you, Val. Nice to be with you. I'm not sure that I'm the one who became the somebody. You know, you've been, uh, you survived in the business you're in now for uh, 19 years or so, so uh, that dates us back almost to high school, Val. That's right, you know. <laughs> You know, Jerry and I go back a long time, or Governor, uh, we go back a long time because my father knows your father and our families know each other. In fact, we come from basically the same hometown, Las Cruces, New Mexico. I was raised in Hatch. I knew that. No, I know that. And uh, I, uh, you know, after, later on when I became a member of the State Senate, uh, Hatch was part of my senatorial district, so I spent a great deal of time there. So, uh, no, I think, uh, you know, that's one of the nice things about living in New Mexico, uh, for an extended period of time is that uh, there are many fa family relationships that go many years, you know. That's true. And in later years, of course, we re-met at the University of New Mexico, and you were a star uh, football, a football player there and uh, well, I very played, athletic. I played football there. That's. Uh, <laughs> and then you partook the other day as the first governor in the Boston Marathon of the race, right? I uh, don't know for a fact that I was the first governor. I know I was the only governor that had... Uh, didn't have enough sense not to stay out of it this year, you know. But I don't think that, at least in recent years, there's been any any governors that I know that have attempted it. I uh, uh, it was quite an experience, Val. It took me uh, four hours and ten minutes to finish the uh, the 26 miles, uh, 385 yards. And you know, I had read a lot about it. I had talked to many people that had run marathons, but until you do it, uh, you really don't know what it is you experience those last six miles. It's just uh, uh, an experience that, that I'll never forget, but when it's all over, it's a very a very rewarding kind of feeling that you know that uh, you were able to finish. Now let me ask you something. I was wondering about this the other day when you were talking about the marathon race. While you were running, I know that uh, the state of New Mexico has to furnish you with security. How did you handle the security part? <laughs> did you have guards running along with you? Or no, what? no. We we did have uh, you know a couple of our security officers that went uh, <clears throat> from New Mexico to. Uh, to be with me, we had uh, some uh, some state patrolmen from uh, the state of Massachusetts that uh, were assigned to to be with me while I was there. But of course, during the race, my uh, my designated security officer was Marty Valdez from Albuquerque, who's a good friend of mine. And, and and very seriously, I had thought all along that it would be very foolish for me to 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 run in that 26 mile course and not have someone that was willing to stay with me. Uh, through the whole time, so that Marty Valdez was uh, was there for his own c accomplishment, but at the same time, he if I would have had to stop, he would have had to stop. So that was an understanding that we had. So uh, we we felt that it was necessary to have someone with me uh, in case you know I became ill or or something of that nature. Governor, I think this is a first for our show because you are the first governor from the state of New Mexico who has ever been our guest on the show. We have had ex-governors and governors-to-be and what have you, but you're the first governor and uh, from New Mexico, although we have had governors from other states. I remember here some time ago we had Raul Castro, uh, governor of the state of Arizona, uh, who is now an ambassador, He's I believe. ambassador to, to Argentina. Argentina. Mm -hmm. But you're the first governor that we have had from New Mexico. Governor, let me ask you something. How does it feel, or rather, what are some of the nice things about being governor? Well, uh, I guess this, you know, depends on the day and the week, I guess. But uh, you know, there, there are a number of things that are very satisfying to be governor, uh, to be able to do things that uh, you know are going to have a long-term effect on people, uh, to be able to, to say uh, put the emphasis on the programs that you think uh, is what what's going to help your state uh, really move ahead. Uh, there's a lot of things, uh, you know what. I think what would be a contradiction, well, some people probably think that it's the public appearances, the uh, uh, the recognition, the uh, you know the uh, that kind of thing. Actually, after a while, becomes the things that you like the least. Uh, you know, the uh, the being out in in public, the addressing conventions, addressing banquets, addressing seminars, addressing conventions. And that gets to be whether that's the least enjoyable. Some of the most enjoyable things as governor are things that maybe I do with very little recognition, like uh, just not too long ago I visited a great school in uh, Socorro, New Mexico, visited with kids, you know, and uh, have a chance to spend five minutes visiting with second graders. Uh, uh, some of the things that you really enjoy as governor, uh, 
get very little attention uh, because they, they're generally not controversial. Uh, some of the things that I enjoy the least probably are, are in fact, the, the loss of privacy. You know, the, uh, me not being able to, to be at some restaurant uh, enjoying a nice dinner uh, and, and have no one know who you are, or uh, my wife and I going maybe to, to some nightclub, if that's what we choose to do. It, it's very difficult to be a private uh, person uh, when you're in public office. I guess, but we, uh, people in public service, ask for this, so to speak, because otherwise you wouldn't be governor, well, wouldn't Well, that's right. Ted it's Montoya. one of the uh, things that you have to inherit when you become governor. Ted Montoya is a very good friend of mine. His brother, uh, Joe, of course, used to be a U.S. senator, and Ted's now a state senator, but more importantly, we're just very close friends. And, you know, sometimes when I'm having a bad day, uh, I've complained to him. I said, you know, Ted, this is a tough job or whatever. And after I get through talking, he said, well, Jerry, if it's so bad, why don't you resign? You know? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right, yeah. What about the bodyguards? Do they bother you, or is it really, you know, I, like the other day I saw you at the New Mexico State Fair, and you had a couple of guys that were following you everywhere you went. Does this become, uh, a, does it bother you, or is it, uh, is this? It bothers you. It, uh, it bothers you. Uh, first of all, it bothers you that they would even be necessary. You know, you would hope that uh, the people of New Mexico would be the, mo the biggest security you have, you know, and as long as, you have some of your constituents and friends around you, you know, they'd be the biggest uh, assistance that you could have, but unfortunately that, that is not necessarily the case. So security is something that is very necessary, uh, but it does bother you to have you around. It, and, and, you know, we have uh, a number of security officers, they're all fine, fine young men who I like in a very personal way, and one of the, one of the things that we tell them when, when they come to the security uh, staff is that, the, you know, they, they need to remember that Anything that, that takes place between them and I is not personal, that they sometimes become a symbol of something that I really don't like having around. You know, I like driving my own car, uh, opening my own door, uh, you know, the kind of things that you and I are used to. And sometimes uh, if I'm having a bad day, you know, they're the closest ones to me that maybe might be the victims of, of, uh, of a temper fit or something, you know. So uh, uh, it's, it's hard, but, uh, but you get used to it. Well, you know, um, you have been known, or at least you have, I read in the newspapers, to be a, the other day the Tribune uh, described you as a fury, the fury Jerry, you know, <laughs> uh, that you seem to, they asked, they said, they were insinuating that you have a high temper or whatever. And well, I think it's been exaggerated. Uh, I have a temper, but I think most people do. And uh, uh, wh one thing about me, uh, Val, I probably will never die of an ulcer, you know, because whenever, whenever I get angered, I express my viewpoint, you know, whether it's with one of my kids or with my wife or with somebody in the staff or with a member of the media, you know. Is it true, excuse me for interrupting, but is this true that uh, uh, some time ago, a year or two ago, you challenged somebody to go outside <laughs> and get it on? No, it was reported that way, and it was it was. I right. found it, it very <laughs> amusing and very, very, well, it know, was, very it was different. It was kind of close to that. There was a, a black militant that had harassed me for two, three months, he had taken a couple of employees hostage. You know, he, he and another young fellow had taken an employee hostage, and I had to negotiate with him for two and a half hours over the telephone. And uh, so, you know, it, it was kind of a, an ongoing hassle. Uh, he was going by the name of Gasundi. And I was meeting with, with a, a group of black leaders in Albuquerque, and we were having some good discussions, and he kept interrupting me. And I finally said to him, Gasundi, I said, why don't you wait until this is done, and you know I'll take care of a problem outside, you know, which... I guess can be interpreted as challenging somebody to go outside, and it made a good story, so we never denied it, you know. But uh, the reason I want to take him outside because that's where my security officers were. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that you're smart. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Uh, God, there's so many things that I would like to ask you. One of the things that uh, some time ago we read in a newspaper about uh, you made a comment that there were some racial slurs that were directed at you concerning some stories that were brought out. Do you have any problems being a Spanish-speaking surname governor? What, what can you tell us about that? No, well, actually, I think uh, being a, a you know, Mexican-American or uh, you know, Spanish or American or you know, uh, my ethnic group is, in some ways has been maybe, I think, an advantage, you know, because uh, I've had some opportunities uh, coming from a small state that maybe I would not have otherwise. You know, usually when, when you go to some of these national conferences, uh, it's the governors from the larger states that get the attention. But like, for example, last fall, uh, four of us were on Meet the Press. Uh, you know, Governor Rockefeller of West Virginia, who's a prominent name. Governor DuPont, of the DuPont family from uh, Delaware, another prominent name. 
Governor Milliken of Michigan, you know, of a big state, and, and I was one of the governors. Uh, maybe if I had not been uh, of Mexican-American origin, I may not have been invited. So in some ways, maybe it, it's been a, a, of an advantage. You know, I get to do things maybe that I may not have coming other, otherwise coming from a small state. But I, I, uh, I've had a, an ongoing battle with uh, the Albuquerque Journal, uh, and I think uh, I've, I've pointed out to them that they have a, a built-in bias that uh, they can't seem to overcome uh, editorially, and, and uh, I don't mind them criticizing me for things that I do that are, you know, that are wrong. But when they simply go out of their way to try to embarrass me, then we have to fight back. And uh, uh, I, uh, you know, calling calling them racist, which is what I did, may be an overstatement of the fact, you know, but. I think it, it helps them to focus in on, on the problem that I've discussed with them several times. Well, Governor, we have run out of time, believe it or not. Y no hablamos en español. Y no hablamos en español. <laughs> Vamos a hablar un poquito en español. Déjeme hacerte una pregunta, Gobernador. Este, en la penitencia que tenemos ahora, uh, leemos de que hay muchos, uh, uh, que tenemos mucha gente en la penitenciaria. Este, ¿Cuándo hay planes para hacer una nueva penitenciaria? No, no, no penitenciaria nueva propia, pero eh, edificios uh, de, de seguridad mínima uh -huh. uh, en diferentes lugares del estado. Uh -huh. y, y si podemos mo mover de, uh, ciertos miembros de, de, de la población para otros lugares, uh, vamos a tener menos en, en Santa Fe. Entonces pero, alivian el problema que existe en Santa, Santa Fe. Fe sí. Ay, sí. Pero y... me preguntan en veces mucho, uh, well, si hablo en español, y es que en televisión, o en el radio, o en, o en discursos, todo el tiempo es inglés. Sí. Si mucha gente me dice, ¿puedes hablar español? Y se le digo, un poquito. Claro que sí. Una vez tuvimos al, al, al gran actor del cine, Anthony Quinn, y la gente no sabía que Anthony Quinn hablaba en español. Y todos estaban asombrados porque Anthony Quinn hablaba en español. Pero es que, como siempre lo ven en las películas, lo hablan en inglés. Sí, sí. Pero todo el mundo habla español. Gobernador, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you, Bill. It's a pleasure and an honor to have you on the show. And uh, I hope you can make it once again. I hope so. Both as governor and an ex-governor, but <laughs> the term is coming up. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Amados amigos de Torino, es cuanto momento la parte musical de este programa de televisión, pero primero estos importantes mensajes comerciales.